This is going to be my second installment from the best of Robert Service poetry for me. Because not even though I don't always like poetry, sometimes people find a type of poetry they actually really do enjoy. This happens to be the type that I like. So I'm going to read five poems today, starting with The Ballot of Gum Boot Ben. He was an old prospector with a vision blared and dim. He asked me for a grub stake, and the same I gave to him. He hinted of a hidden trove, and when I made so bold, to question his veracity, this is the tale he told. I do not seek the copper streak, nor yet the yellow dust. I am not fain for the sake of gain, to irk the frozen crust. Let fellows gro gross find gilded dross, far other in my mark. O oh, gentle youth, this is the truth. I go to seek the ark. I prospected the pelly, the pelly bed. I prospected the white. The Norden scold for love of gold. I piked from morn till night. Afar and near, for many a year, I led the, wi the wild stampede until I guessed that all my quest was vanity and greed. Then came I to a land I knew no man had ever seen, a haggard la land forlornly spanned by mountains lank and lean. The niches said twas full of dread, of smoke and fiery breath, and no man dare put foot in there for fear of pain and death. But I was made all unafraid, so careless and alone. Day after day I made my way into this land unknown. Night, night after night, by campfire light, I crouched in lonely thought. Only gentle youth, this is the truth, I knew not what I sought. I rose at dawn and wa I wandered on. Tis somewhat fine and grand to be alone and hold your own in God's vast awesome land. Come woe or weal, tis fine to feel a hundred miles between the trails you dare and pathways where the feet of men have been. And so I fell on me a sp and and so it fell on me a spell to wander lust was cast. The land was still and strange and chill and cavernous and vast. And sad and dead and dull as lead, the valleys sought the snow, and far and wide on every side the aspen peaks arose, ashen peaks arose. The moon was light as a silent spike that pierced the sky right through. The small stars popped and winked and hopped in vastitudes of blue. And unto me for company came creatures of the shade, and formed in rings and whispery, whispered things that made me half afraid. And strange though beat was born on me, the land that had lived of old, and men had crept and slain and slept where now they toiled for gold. Through jungles dim at the mountain mammoth grim had sought the oozy fen, and on his track, on his track, all bent of back he had crawled the hairy men. And furthermore, strange deeds of yore in this dead place were, were done. They haunted me as wild and free I roamed from sun to sun, until I came where sudden flame unlit a terraced height, a ragnant peak that seemed to seek the, cor the coronal of night. I scaled the peak my heart was weak, yet on and on I pressed. Skyward I strained until I gained its dazzling silver crest. And there I found, with all around, a world supine and stark. Swept clean of snow, a flat plateau, and on it lay the ark. Yes, there I knew, by two and two, the beast did disembark, and so in haste I ran and traced in letters on the ark. My human name, Ben Smith's the same, and now I want to float, a syndicate to haul and freight 
to town that noble boat. I met him later in a bar and made a gay remark. Anent an ancient miner and an option on the ark. He gazed at me reproachfully as only toppers can. But what he said, I can't repeat. He was a bad old man. And that's just a picture. I don't know if that's a him, but it says young and old alike caught gold fever in the Yukon. The low down white. This is the payday up in the up at the mines when the bearded brutes come down. Their money to burn in the streets tonight. So I've sent my clock. Clooch to town with a haggard face and a ribbon of and a ribbon of red entwined in her hair of brown and I knew at the dawn she'll come reeling home with the bottles one two three one for her to drown her shame and two big bottles for me to make me forget the thing I am the man that I used to be to make me forget the brand of the dog as I crouch in this hideous place to make me forget once I kindled the light of love in a lady's face, where even the squalid Siwash now holds me black, me a black disgrace. Oh, I have guarded my secret well, and who would dream as I speak in a tribal tongue like a ro like a rogue unhung, mid the ranch house filth and reek. I could roll to bed with a Latin phrase and rise with a verse of Greek. Yet I was a senior prizeman once, and the pride of a college eight. Called to the bar, my friends were true, but they could not keep me straight. Then came the divorce, and I went abroad and died in the River Platte. But I'm not dead yet, though with half a lung, there isn't time to spare. And I hope that the year will come to see, will see me out. And thank God no one will care. Save maybe the little slim Siwish, Siwish girl with the rose of shame in her hair. She will come with the dawn and the dawn is near. I can see its evil glow like a corpse light seen through a frosty pane in a night of wanton woe. And wonder she comes by the bleak bold pines swift staggering through the snow. Stuff people used to lower themselves to. And the next one, the man from El Dorado. He's the man from El Dorado, and he just arrived in town in moccasins and oily buckskin, in moccasins and oily buckskin shirt. He's gaunt as an Indian and pretty nigh as brown. His greasy, he's greasy, and he smells of sweat and dirt. He sports a crop of whiskers that would shame a healthy dog. Hard work has racked his joints and stooped his back. He, slope, he slops along the sidewalk, followed by his yellow dog. But he's a, got a bunch of gold dust in his sack. He's a little wistful as he blinks at all the lights. And maybe he, think, he is thinking of his calm and the dark of dwar, dwarfish cabin where he lay and dreamed at nights. Thank God he'll never see the place again, where he lived on tinned tomatoes, beef embalmed and sourdough bread, on rusty beans and bacon furred with mold. His stomach's out of kilter and his system's full of lead, but it's over and he, his poke is full of gold. He has panted at the windlass, he has loaded in the drift, he has pounded at the face of oozy clay. He has taxed himself to sickness, dark and damp and doubled shift. He has labored like a demon night and day. And now, praise God, it's over. He seems to breathe again of new mown hay, the warm yet friendly loam. He sees a snowy orchard in the green and dimpling plain and a little vine clad cottage and home. He's the man from El Dorado, and he's had a bite of, uh, and he's had a bite and sup, and he's met with a drothy 
friend or two. He's cached away his gold dust, but he's but he's sort of bucked up, bucking up. So he's kept enough tonight to see him through. His eyes, his eye is bright and genial. His tongue no longer lags. His heart is brimming over with joy and mirth. He may be far from savory. He may be clad in rags. But tonight he feels as if he owns the earth. Says he, boys, here is where the shaggy north and I will shake. I thought I'd never managed to get free. I kept on making misses, but at last I've got my stake. There's no more thawing frozen muck for me. I am going to God's country, where I'll live the simple life. I'll buy a bit of land and make a start. I'll carve a little homestead, and I'll win a little wife, and raise ten little kids to cheer my heart. They, sig they signified their sympathy by crowding to the bar. They bellied up three deep and drank his health. He shed a radiant smile around and smoked a rank cigar. He wished, they wished him honor, happiness, and wealth. They drank unto his wife-to-be, that unsuspecting maid. They drank unto his children half a score. And when they got through drinking, very tenderly they laid the man from El Dorado on the floor. He's the man from El Dorado, and he's only starting in to cultivate a thousand-dollar jag. His poke is full of gold dust and his heart is full of sin. And he's dancing with a girl called Muck Luck Mag. She's as light as a fairy. She's as pretty as a peach. She's mistress of the witchcraft to beguile. There's sunshine in her manner. There is, there's music in her speech. And there's concentrated honey in her smile. Oh, the fever of the dance hall and the glitter and the shine. The beauty and the jewels and the whirl. The madness of music, the rapture of the wine, the languorousness, or the languorous allurement of a girl. She is like a lost Madonna. He is gaunt, unkept, and grim. But she fondles him and gazes in his eyes. Her kisses seek his savory lips and soon seem to him he has staked a little claim in paradise. For who's for a juicy two step? cries the master of the floor. Music throbs with soft, seductive beat. There's glitter, gl guilt, and gladness. There's a pretty girl's galore. With a whole, with a woolly man with moccasins on his feet. They know they've got him going. He is buying wine for all. They crowd around as buzzards at a feast. Then, when his poke is empty, they boost him from the hall and spur him into the gutter like a beast. He's the man from El Dorado, and he's painted red at the town. Behind, he leaves a trail of yellow dust and a whirl of senseless riot. He is ramping up and down. There's no, nothing cheeks. His, there's nothing cheeks his madness and his lust. And soon the word is passed around. It travels like a flame. They fight to clutch his hand and call him friend. The chevaliers of lost rapture, the dames of sorrow, sorry fame. Then comes a grim awakening, the end. He's the man from El Dorado, and he gives a grand affair. There's feasting, dancing, wine without restraint. The smooth bow brummels of the bar. The pharaoh men are there, the, the tin horns and the purveyors of red paint. The sleek painted women, their predacious eyes aglow. Sure, Klondike City never saw the like. Then Muckluck Mag proposes the toast, the, the giver of the show, the, li the livest sport that ever hit the pike. The live ones rise to their feet, he stammers to reply, and then there comes before his muddled brain a vision of green vastitudes beneath an April sky and clover pastures drenched with silver rain. He knows that it can never be that he's down and out. Life leers at him with foul and fetid breath. And then amid the revelry, the song and cheer and shout, he suddenly grows grim and cold as death. He grips a table tensely and says, Dear friends of mine, I've let you dip your fingers in my purse. I've crammed you at my table and I've drowned you in my wine. And I've left, you, and I've left to give you but my curse. 
I've failed supremely in my plans. It's rather late to whine. My poke is mighty weaselly up, weaseled up and small. I thank you each for coming here. The happiness is mine. And now you thieves and harlots take it all. He twists the throng from his poke. He swings it over his head. The nuggets fall around their feet like grain. The rattle over the roof and wall and they scatter, roll and spread. The dust is like a shower of golden rain. The guests at the guests a moment stand aghast, their gro then grovel on the floor. They fight and snarl and claw like beasts of prey. And then, as everyone grabbed and everyone swore, the man from El Dorado slipped away. He's the man from El Dorado, and they found him stiff and dead half covered by the freezing ooze and dirt, a clotted colt with his hand uh, was in his hand, a hole was in his head, and he wore an old and oily buckskin shirt. His eyes were fixed and horrible as one who hails the end. The frost had set him rigid as a log, and there, half lying on his breast, his last and only friend, that there crouched a whiny, a whined and mangy yellow dog. Oh man, how that living brought people low. The Reckoning. It's fine to have a blowout in a fancy restaurant with terrapin and canvas back and all the wine you want. To enjoy the flowers and the music, watch the pretty women pass, Smoke a choice cigar and sip the wealthy water out in your glass. It's bully in a high-toned joint to eat and drink your fill. But it's quite another matter when you pay the bill. It's great to go out every night on fun or pleasant bent. To wear your, ra your glad rags always and never save a cent. To drift along regardless, have a good time every trip to hit the high spots sometimes, to let your chances slip, to know you're acting foolish, yet to go on fooling still, till nature calls a showdown and you pay the bill. Time has got a little bill, get wise whilst you, while you may, for the debit side's increasing in a most alarming way. The things you had to, no right to do the things you should have done, they're all put down. It's up to you to pay for every one. So eat, drink, and be merry. Have a good time, if you will. But God, God help you when the time comes and you foot the bill. I like that one a lot. There's a lot of people that should really take that one into account. And the final one. The Shooting of Dan McGrew. It's one of his more famous ones, I think. A bunch of boys were whooping it up in the Malamute Saloon. The kid that handles the music box was hitting a jag time tune. Back of the bar in a solo game sat dangerous Dan McGrew. And watching his luck was a Lido Love, the lady that's known as Lou. When out of the night, which a which was 50 below, and into the din and the glare, there stumbled a miner fresh from the creeks, dirty dog and loaded for bear. He looked like a man with a foot in the grave and scarcely the strength of a louse, yet he tilted, his, tilted a poke of dust on the bar and he called for drinks for the house. There was none could place the stranger's face, though we searched ourselves for a clue, but we drank his health, and the last to drink was dangerous Dan McGrew. There's men that somehow just grip your eyes and hold them hard like a spell. And such was he, and he looked to me like a man who had lived in hell, with a face most hair and the dreary stare of a dog whose day is done. As he watered the green stuff in his glass, the drops fell one by one. Then I got to figure figuring who he was and wondered what he'd do. And I turned my head and there, wa and there watching him was a lady 
that's known as Lou. His eyes were rubbing round the room, and he seemed in a kind of daze, till at last that old piano fell in the way of his wandering gaze. The ragtime kid was having a drink. There was no one else on the stool, so the stranger stumbles across the room and flops down there like a fool. In a buckskin shirt that was glazed with dirt, he sat and I saw him sway. Then he clutched the keys in his talent hands. My God, but that man could play. Were you ever out on a great on the great alone when the moon was awfully clear and the icy mountains hemmed you in with a silence you most could bear? With only the howl of the timber of a timber wolf. And you camp there in the cold, a half-dead thing in a stark dead world, clean mad from muck called gold. While high overhead, yellow, green, yellow, and red, the northern lights swept in bars. Then you've a hunch what the music meant, hunger and night and the stars. The hunger, not of the belly kind, that's banished with bacon and beans but the gnawing hunger of lonely men from home and all it means. For a fireside far that cares that are, far from cares that are, four walls and a roof above, but oh, so cramful of cozy joy and crowned with a woman's love, a woman dearer than all the world and true as heaven is true. God, how ghastly she looked through her rouge that lady that's known as Rue, as Lou. Then on a sudden music change, or then on a sudden the music changed so soft that you scarce could hear, but you felt your li that your life had been looted clean of all that it once held dear, that someone had stolen the woman you loved, that her love was a devil's lie, that your guts were gone and the best of you was to crawl away and die. Twas the crowning cry of a heart's despair, and it thrilled you through and through. I'll guess I'll, I guess I'll make it a spread misery, said the dangerous Dan McGrew. The music almost died away, then it burst like a pent-up flood, and it seemed to say, repay, repay, and my eyes were blind with blood. The thought came back as an of an ancient wrong and it stung like a frozen lash and the lust awoke to kill to kill then the music stopped with a crash and the stranger turned and his eyes they burned in a most peculiar way in a buckskin shirt that was glazed with dirt he sat and I saw him sway then his lips went in in a kind of grin and he spoke uh, and his voice was calm and boys he said, "You don't know me, and none of you, and none of you care a damn. But I want to state, and my words are straight, and I'll bet my pope they're true, that one of you is a hound of hell, and that one is Dan McGrew." Then I ducked my head, and the lights went out, and two guns blazed in the dark, and a woman screamed, and the lights went up, and the two men lay stiff and stark. Pitched on his head and pumped full of lead was dangerous Dan McGrew, while the man from the creek lay clutched to the breast of the lady that's known as Lou. These are the simple facts of the case, and I guess I ought to know. They say that the stranger was crazed with hooch, and I'm not denying it so. I'm not so wise as a lawyer as the lawyer guys, but strictly between us two. The woman that kissed him and pinched his poke was a lady that's known as Lou.